First, um, so I can show to my colleagues that I'm working today. Smile, everybody. <laughs> yes. Oh, man. You're so many. Great. Okay. Um, logging. Um, we're using the Elasticsearch since I work for Elastic, the company. Um, and it's basically the topic of the talk is more or less logging all the things. It's just like whatever you have, we can basically collect it somewhere and put it in a centralized fashion and see what is going on. So I work at Elastic, the company behind Elasticsearch, Logsearch, Kibana, Beats. I am part of the infrastructure team. And I always say that it's a Unix pipe in the middle. And I pipe that into developer advocacy. So now it's conference season, so I'm running around Europe doing uh, conferences. There are more seats over here, so just walk down, squeeze in. Um, and if you happen to come to Vienna, I run two monthly meetups, one about databases in general, and the other one about academic papers. So we basically, I didn't really like it enough at university, so now I'm still reading one academic paper per month, and then we discuss it together. Um, yeah, so just to get an overview, who is using more than five servers or containers or something? Nice. The next question is then, so how are you logging? Who is still using SSH plus tail? Get out. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm kidding. Uh, maybe you can learn something new. Uh, or maybe you, you know deep inside yourself that um, that is, I, I wouldn't say wrong, but it's probably not the most scalable solution in, in, in the long run. Uh, that you just, um, yeah, if you have like 20 open tabs in SSH and then just like try to get an overview of what is going on in your system, that is probably not the long-term solution. So, Elastic built something, like it started off as Elasticsearch, the, the full-text search thing, you know, for search. And I probably don't need to describe those icons. If you're searching on any of these sites behind the search box, there is Elasticsearch actually searching. And then people started doing more stuff with that. So we always say they, they joined the family. Um, we kind of bought these open source projects into, into Elastic, the company. Uh, but their team leads probably, or founders probably wouldn't like to hear that they were bought. So they prefer to hear that, yeah, they joined the family. So we have Elasticsearch, which stores your data. And then people build other stuff. The first one was Kibana. Kibana was basically to visualize whatever data you have in there. And we all often call it to democratize your data because it's so easy. You just have the web browser, you point it to Elasticsearch, and with Kibana you can just visualize and see what is actually going on in your data. And then we have Logstash. Logstash already has log in the name, but it can do much more. It has, I think, more than 200 plugins for now, so it can get data from lots of sources, then do some parsing and processing or enrichment in the middle. The enrichment would be, for example, you have a, an Apache or Nginx access log, and you have IP addresses. And you want to resolve those IP addresses to geolocations. So you want uh, to know, like, anyway, um, so I, I was about to say that if you use log session, you do this enrichment, uh, you have the IP address, and you want to know, like, uh, who came from Slovenia, who came from, I don't know, Croatia, whatever. You want to have the country, so you want to do this enrichment. You want to take the IP address and actually resolve that to a geolocation. And then we have lots of outputs. Often you will store your data to uh, Elasticsearch directly, but it could be another destination where you actually store your data. So if you just want to have flat files, it could be Amazon S3 or something like that. So that is where you put your data. And that went really well. And Elasticsearch logs with Kibana together, ELK, the ELK stack. Um, who has heard of ELK before? Yeah, okay, that, that's, that one is wide used. And, and that is nice and worked well, and we even had the Plushy ELK, we handed out as a gift. And it is very sticky, and every, everybody remembers that. Um, however, then, or not then, this is widely used. For example, at CERN, you have they have started of computers, they want to have some centralized logging. Sales was in the cloud, they also want to centralize the logging at some point. Goldman Sachs is a little different, they are using it mainly for auditing and compliance, because every now and then something bad there happens and then they have to pay a big fine. And they then decide, well, it's maybe cheaper just to kind of prevent that and invest a few millions into an auditing and compliance platform than pay 20 million, 50 million, whatever, every few years for something bad. Uh, that is what they are using it for. Um, and then this little fellow came along. That is Beats, the, the little fish. And um, why did Beats join the family? 
Logstitch is very nice. Um, it started off as Ruby and is now JRuby, so you always need the JVM. And a lot of sysadmins are not that happy if you tell them, well, we want to centralize the login, but now you need to add the JVM to all your servers. Especially if you're not a Java shop and you don't really need the JVM on all the servers. And uh, sysadmins were not that happy about that. And Beats is kind of trying to conquer that. So the Beats are written in Go, so you get native binaries and no dependencies. And they're kind of like lightweight agents, shippers, forwarders, whatever you want to call them. They're just basically taking information and shipping it off. They're not doing this enrichment phase. You will still lose, use Logstash for that enrichment. Uh, but they're just trying to collect information and be as efficient in forwarding <coughs> that um, as possible. And the problem was there is no bee in elk. Um, so maybe that picture is a bit too drastic, so we didn't really kill the elk. Um, we're just trying to get away from it. So we're trying to remove elk, even though it's very hard, you know. And we internally have something called the elk alert. So whenever somebody does a meetup or writes a blog post and still refers to it as the elk, uh, we will reach out and say, hey, um, that is very nice, but we have a new marketing now. Uh, like we would love to have that renamed, and the elk is it's not that, but it's kind of like retired in, in elk home or retiree home somewhere living happy, happy ever after. Um, so we tried with this one first, and um, that is the elk bee or the elk. You can see it's a bee, it has the elk horn. <laughs> um, and that was really nice, and, and one of my colleagues even liked it so much that he created or printed stickers on his own, even though we never made them officially. The problem was uh, Elastic is always about scaling and we decided at some point that is not really a scalable approach because what happens if we add another product? Like then we need to redo the entire branding again and we need to make up another animal. And the more letters we add, the harder it will, will get and so it's not as scalable as we would want it to be. Um, so then marketing decided well we'll, we'll go for kind of the boring route basically. Uh, and just use the company name, and so that's why we now, now try to always call it Elastic Stack, and that includes all our open source products. So what the stack basically looks like is this: so you have Beats, which is kind of the lightweight shipper that you have on all your dozens or hundreds of servers. Uh, it forwards the information, forwards it either to Logstash if you need some parsing, or directly into Elastic Search if you don't need any parsing, and then Kibana kind of sits on top of it and you can see what is actually going on. So that is the general architecture. All of those four products are open source and free. They are Apache 2 licensed. You can just download them, use them. We provide Docker containers as well. So whatever you want to do, um, take them and build whatever you feel like. Um, and we recently also switched everything to version 5. Now we are at 5.3.1 as of Thursday. Um, and all the products are always released at the same time, the same version up and down. Because before, since all the different products joined the family at different points in time, they all had their own versioning number. And it was even for us very confusing because it was uh, Kibana 4.6 with Elasticsearch 2.4 and Beats 1.2 or 3, I cannot even remember. Like all of those versions just didn't ma match up. And now we just make them all or sync them up and the products are all on one version number. So whatever you get, just get one unified version number. And another common question is then, okay, all of that stuff was open source, how, how do we actually make money? Since our company is growing quite rapidly, I think we're nearly 500 by now, and we're a distributed company, so somebody needs to pay our salaries. Um, so the, the stuff in the dashed line, the blue line, those are all open source, so you can just use that for free, um, but we provide it has a service, so if you just want to use Elasticsearch, um, we provide a hosted software as a service load, uh, solution uh, that is called Elastic Cloud. It's running currently on AWS and soon on Google, but it's not what AWS is actually providing itself. That is a competing service, which we obviously don't like too much. Um, and there are many reasons why ours is better. We can, if anybody is interested, we can talk about that afterwards. And on the right-hand side, we have something called XPEC. Those are plugins, so you will get the same version or binary of the open source version, uh, but you can plug in like, additional functionality if you need those. And those will always go hand-in-hand -hand with support. So if you're a big bank or insurance company, um, you will want to, want to have support, and you probably want to have stuff like security or monitoring of your cluster. Um, those are the things for which we charge something to 
actually keep the company going. <coughs> okay, let's dive into what is Speeds doing. And we have five commonly used Speeds. Um, I'll quickly go through them and I'll, then I'll just show you a demo. So Filebeat, I always describe it as it's like tail F over the network but on steroids. So it's basically tailing a file and just chipping it off and then you can, for example, parse it in Logstash uh, and store the results in Elasticsearch. Uh, we have metric beat, which started off as top beat, top like the Linux command. Uh, so it's giving you system metrics, but it also can do application metrics. So we have plugins into Apache, Nginx, MySQL, Postgres, Couchbase, I think Cassandra now, um, soon Kubernetes. And it can just extract metrics from these systems and store them as well. So it will just, if you have some API and you expose some metrics, we can just collect those and then store them as well and <coughs> afterwards see what has happened over time with your services. Then we have Packet Beef. It's a lot like Wireshark. And I guess nearly everybody is using Wireshark, or lots of you, right? Wireshark, anybody? Yeah, it, it's a great ser service or product. The main downside is if you have lots of servers, running Wireshark of them becomes a pain because then you need to collect packets on lots of different servers and you need to extract them and store them somewhere and then you can run Wireshark against that. And Packet Beat is kind of doing the same thing, so it's analyzing the headers and extracting the information from the headers and stores just this information. So it would, for example, know if this was an HTTP request, this was an HTTP response. The whole thing took 100 milliseconds, the response code was a 200 and you hit the URL foo bar. And it will know, oh, some of you have more 500s or 404s or something like that. And you don't need to instrument your application, it will just extract that from the network layer. So that is very convenient. Then we have something, it's pretty new, called Heartbeat. It's basically pinging your services and storing the services up or down. And it will also uh, store stuff like the response time and how long did it take to establish the TCP connection, the HTTP connection, uh, HTTPS if you're using a certificate. And we'll store it over time and you see how does your service, this response time is developed over time as well. If you're using Windows, I'm kind of sorry for you, but we're still, <laughs> we're still here to help. Um, so, so you know, I haven't touched Windows in here, so I hope I, I get this right. So there is this weird thingy that locks everything in Windows, which is basically an application. And I, you always need this application to actually see the locks in there, since it's not a plain file. Uh, we have WinLock Beat, which can extract this information and also store it into Elasticsearch, so you have it all in one place. And if you want to build your own beat, it's very simple. We provide a base library, so you can simply take that library and build your own beats. And there are lots of community beats out there. So, for example, um, to connect them to specific applications or just to collect uh, JSON from your application that is exposing that or monitor other stuff, lots of people have built different beats. Um, and now I can just quickly show you um, what is going on. So, this is Kibana, for those who haven't seen it. Like, this is version five now. Um, it is more colorful than previously. I always say that the version three was the black one, version four was the white one, and version five is the colorful one. Uh, we have moved the menu to the left, so the thing here on the left, that is the menu you have, but otherwise it's pretty much the same. If you have ever seen another version, you will still know what is going on. And I have just our four official beats running here, so five beat, part beat, metric beat, and packet beat. They are all collecting information. And this is the discover view. Here you can just see um, something I have collected over time. So you see that is one log message. Um, it was a JSON message and the ad. So this is the, actually the, the Kibana log I have collected here. Um, if you see that is var log kibana kibana.log, so I've just pointed finally basically to a path and said whatever happens there, just collect that information. And since it's JSON, um, I have extracted all of these fields automatically already. Um, but there are other formats which are not JSON, and then I'm passing them into log stage. So for example, I have my 3000 uh, log entries here, and I say, okay, just show me everything that has restart in it. And okay, I'm down to 10 messages. Um, let's see what their type is. And you can see Kibana restarted. 40% of the messages uh, are from Kibana and Syslog. And then, just interested in syslog now, so I just quickly press the plus here. You can see I have searched for a restart, 
and I have limited it to the type syslog. So here I just have six hits in, in that file. And if you expand that, you can see message, that was the original syslog message. And then I have extracted with log slash, I have extracted some of these attributes here. So for example, you can uh, see the syslog facility code um, or the, the process ID. These are all, the process was system D and the process ID was one, so I have passed it out. So I can explicitly search now, for example, just give me everything that was done by the system D process or any other process, or give me any message um, that contains restart, as I have done now. So here you can just start searching over all the files you have. Let's see what the other beats can do. Um, we have something called dashboards. There you can just put together dashboards um, <coughs> and show what is going on in a graphical fashion. These are pre-built dashboards. Since I'm lazy, I didn't build them myself. These will come, just come bundled with the beats so you can see what is going on. For example, here I have the, the packet beat uh, running for HTTP and you can see, okay, here I have some HTTP requests running. Um, I'm generally showing the time frame over the last three days, but you could totally freely change that. So either say I'm only interested in the last, um, let's say, last one hour, and you can see, okay, something has running here, been running here, and the, there's a very flat number of requests, and that is actually metric B, uh, heartbeat running, because it's pinging my service every, every half minute or so. Um, and then you can see, in total, over the last hour, I had a thousand requests. These were my top requested URLs. It's a bit boring since everything is a 200. Probably in a live application it would be more colorful where you have 400 to 500 in there as well. Um, but this one, yeah. All the URLs, you can see, okay, the most requested uh, API endpoint was API reporting something. Uh, we had 342 requests and all of them were uh, 200s. So you can see how popular they are. Um, yeah, we don't have any errors now. This, it's kind of embarrassing, I don't have any errors to show. Uh, but if you run it yourself, you probably have something here. Um, or, no, I don't want to offend you in your application. Probably you don't have anything there as well. It's, it's all good. Uh, but we could, yeah, we could generate the 404 now, but yeah, never mind. And at the bottom, for example, here we have a list uh, of all the URLs, like the top URLs uh, if we're requesting, and you can see whatever is popular in your service. Um, Something else we could do is we could do metric B process. If I see processes. And then you can see, this is pretty much what top would do. And you can see, ah, oh, okay, I have these processes running. Uh, in total, I have 91 processes running on that instance. The, the line is very flat. And as you might have, or you, you can see, um, that is, I'll make it a little bit smaller that you can actually see. Um, we have something that is taking up a lot of CPU and a lot of memory here. Any guesses what that process is? No. Java. <laughs> um, so, so, so it's basically doing its job. Um, <laughs> any guesses which processes are that in the Elastic Stack? Logstash. Yes, it's both Logstash and Elasticsearch, since both of them run on the JVM. Uh, the other processes, then we have uh, Node here. So that is also taking up some memory. Any guesses what Node is? Yeah, that's, that was not the main point. No, um, that is actually, um, Kibana is a, a node app. Um, so that is node plus, for historic reasons, Angular and now React as well. Um, and then you can see, okay, the beats are also taking, taking up a bit of resources. So packet beat is also taking up some resources. And here you have basically the list of all the processes running. Um, what you can also have is, if you're running Docker containers, since everybody needs to do Docker right now, uh, we have the same thing for Docker, so we can extract uh, information from the Docker API. And you can see I have one container running here, which is re running Redis. And you can see how many running, pause, stop, what is their CPU, memory usage, and the network that is being on that single process. So you have the, that integration as well. And the final beat we have is heartbeat. Uh, and you can see everything is running. If I would stop my Nginx server now, let's quickly do that. And what you can actually
actually enable is I want to have an auto refresh of every five seconds. And I'll just let that run in the background and yeah. Suddenly you see you serve, we stop the service and your your pinger will immediately match that and will then tell you we'll do three more requests or so and then you will see okay, service is, is gone and then you can start investing uh, investigating and yeah, see what is going on. And you see response times over time, uh, like what it took, how long. Um, and you even have a heat map to see how is the distribution of the times of your requests. So that should be very nice. So to finish off, I always compare kind of the elastic stack to Lego because you have all these building blocks. There will be some assembly required, so don't expect it to be an out of the box solution. But you can pretty much build whatever you want. So you can customize it very freely. And it's not just for log data. You can also do lots of stuff around your business metrics. For example, we track our, all our news vendors. And I track my conferences and how many people are in my talks and everything uh, in Elasticsearch and then in Kibana. And you can actually visualize everything. So it is, we only provide building blocks and whatever you want to build, you can then build yourself. Um, yeah, we've seen those. All open source, um, there is no excuse for actually not giving it a try. And if you're kind of too lazy to put it to get together yourself, um, I have two demos. Uh, one is, for example, the, the one I've used now is basically a Vagrant box. So you run Vagrant up, and it will put together the entire stack and all, all of the components I've shown you now. It will just start that, and you can just start playing around with it. So it will configure all the beats and everything together and we'll just start extracting the metrics and it's actually demoing, monitoring Docker, MongoDB, Redis, um, all of the network information, the metrics, all of that together. Uh, so it's just one megan box and you can use that. There is even the, the final image you can download if, you, if you're too lazy to run Vagrant up and just want to use a virtual box image, you can do that as well. Do I have time for questions? No, no time for questions, but find me afterwards if you have any stickers. No.